So just scrying the aether of zip and just maintaining this symbolic form and just really allowing everything to just fall away. So I see the um, hyperoctahedral form just uh, decompose into its elemental uh, line segments and faces, but really just down to line segments and then just sort of fading out. And all that's left is this core, soft, transparent heart that is just starting to feel that the energy is starting to build up and I'm starting to see the skirt of the Daughter of Fortitude, whom I saw this morning and at midday, and just rising up once again. You know, it's sort of like when you see the shots of people on the red carpet. But at any rate, I see the similar sphere that I'm of my heart in her. It's sort of, if you could imagine, sequins, sequins of a dress but rather than having sequins, instead you have, you have these enormous beads, basically, that are, you know, somewhere like probably about six inches across if this were all proportional. But instead she's very large and she's sort of looming, just showing herself at um, her more, more of a cosmic scale. Um, certainly, you know, rising up from my perspective, I'm seeing her, you know, as if she's miles into the atmosphere. I do understand that um, cosmic scale is larger, but it's big enough. It's good enough for everything else, right? So she's just growing larger and larger. And as she's doing this, the entire, um, it's like she's wrapping the, if you could imagine, like, you know, if you think of like a, a drop cloth that they used to do to represent outer space and just poke a bunch of holes in it and then shine light through to represent stars. If you could imagine that actually cloth being like a, a garland of stars, I think is one of the words in Enochian. I forget the actual word, maybe obloque. Um, but at any rate, it's imagine her being clothed like that. So this is very similar to um, the Thelemic description of Nuit. Um, and just generally speaking, her ability to receive all, you know, all space and time and all of that, all space time. So, but she's very large and she is taking that around and it's like she's got this beautiful sequin dress and like this is sort of like not quite a shawl but um, a little bit of a cloak and like kind of coming about her and she is um, just wrapping that up and now she's about ready to like burst forth with a bunch of energy and this energy is being sort of tightly confined to this beam and it's like shooting right into my heart right now and it's like I can see I'm feeling this sort of like come and blast me at my very very core of my heart and there's nothing you know, there's, there's no reason to, I use the word blast, but it's, it's a beautiful transmission, right? It's highly energetic. It's highly energizing at that core level. And I can feel all of my other chakras now suddenly the heart of those chakras, the, the Anahata of Ajna, of Vishuddha, etc., is, or Visuddha is really, you know, lighting up with this beautiful energy that she's sending. And she's bringing in a lot of the chokmah energy, this beautiful um, variety of light, of color, uh, 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 variegated color just coming through and just lighting up everything around me, my surroundings, my entire energy body. And she's just bidding me relax as she does this, so I do. And I'm just allowing it myself to be really suffused with this. And she's doing this um, with a particular uh, focus. She's saying that, you know, because we've, she and I have already blended our energies to a large degree, 
She's saying it has allowed for a greater receptivity within you of this um, chokmah, this, this wisdom energy. Um, if you're using the Tree of Life, it is chokmah. And it's just coming through, and it's through my entire nervous system that everything is is just settling in and and i'm just allowing it and i'm just feeling this it's like it's turning on this um universal it's like the entire my entire system is sort of really getting finely finely attuned to this um, non-dual universal benevolent energy and it's like um, it's not to say that what that this isn't in any of us at any given time or that I somehow lacked it or that anybody does really but really what this is feeling like it's hard to describe but it's like this very subtle fine-tuning all across the levels of consciousness that is allowing this to more readily pass through what we would consider levels or barriers and really it's just able to like easily make it's almost like um if you think of um it's almost like going from a very um high steps or stairs that you need to like take a lot of running leap to like jump up if you could imagine instead imagine there being you know not even a ramp per se, but just like, um, almost like uh, if you gently tap an air hockey disc and it will go all the way across the table. It's feeling like that. So, so it's wonderful and I'm feeling, I'm trying to look at, look into this, see if there's anything important and she's just a let says just allow it to build up and I'll have something to say so I'm allowing it and I'm allowing it and it's building and it's rising and it's like I'm finding myself growing a little bit like Alice in Wonderland and it's like I'm looking across from her and she's saying, now you understand, now you understand. So a lot of that Bina energy. And she's saying that a couple of, a couple of personal things, but really she's saying that, she's saying to rejoice in wisdom and in understanding that which you have, that which is set aside for you to discover. So this is generally speaking to anybody who, who may be open to this. And it goes without saying that um, her beauty is wonderful if that's something you focus are focusing on, right? And there's, there's still this, this desire, this sudden rushing in of wanting to, to worship you know it's literally like that and it's a real delight you know that of wonder right the vision of wonder there's no doubt about that what i'm seeing ba basically I'm, I'm omitting a lot of stuff here so let's go ahead and go for it um beautiful you know feminine form a goddess-like form rich with color um not always what I see. When I, when I first saw her initially, I saw her in this long dress, kind of a princess cut, a lot of these massive beads, you know, like if, if things were proportional, like about six inch beads, almost like oversized Christmas uh, decorations that you would hung, Christmas bul bulbs. But, you know, crystalline, right? Uh, Semi-transparent, white, the entire dress very white or a translucent kind of white and uh just all the way up and just really just a very um as i say a divine radiance about her right uh but now it's sort of like 
blending in some of that chokmah energy. It's like, imagine her like stripped down, you know, nude, beautiful, radiating all of these colors at once. It's like watching her hair, watching the entire background that I'm seeing her in. It's like this um, very trippy, very colorful, um, a lot of just very bright primary colors. Um, just all of them just, just sort of, you know, flashing, emanating, radiating from her, from her hair, from her face, from her body, and from the background, from this, this, it sort of looks sort of cubic on one side, but also uh, hyperarctahedral on another. And it's like, you know, you are in, in experiencing this, it's like I'm, I'm caught up in it, right? I am part of this. And this is exactly what one should expect from the supernals, right? This is, we're hitting this tra these transpersonal areas very readily. And so um, it's, so I'm looking to see if there's anything else. So this sort of cubic seeming room transforms into a sphere. We get some of the same uh, themes that we had from the midday scrying, which will be on the blog. But, you know, the, the, the whole idea of cubing of the sphere and then in my case, you know, adding in that hyper octahedral form or hypersphere and hypercube and all of these things, um, that theme continues. But again, I'm getting this sense of just a vertical being pulled up now. So whereas before when you're scrying the lower aethers and you may not be ready, it's like, if the very first time you go through, it may seem like, okay, I'm just taking another step, I'm taking another step, and it seem, may seem like you're putting in more energy. So kind of uh, an endothermic reaction if you were to use a chemistry analogy. But in this case, right, it's like, no, this is, the, the momentum will carry you upward and onward. And the sense that I'm getting is, is that this will continue throughout the rest of the ritual. So not even halfway through, but definitely carrying me through the remaining aethers, of which there will only be eight remaining after this one, and then the additional um, 19 days, the same energy will continue. So she's just um, suggesting that this technique, that the modification of my usual approach of instead reading only one side of a leaf in the morning and at noon, and then in the evening just activating the furniture and making the call, still making making a call three times a day but just omitting the reading from the leaf that will be helpful it'll preserve my voice and it'll make, help me see through it to the end but she's um she's giving me a very warm embrace and she's saying as above so below and that has a very personal meaning to me um and and i'm just checking to see if there's anything else and she's just giving me a lot of reassurance. And she's saying she, she knows that you have had, that I've had to hold a lot in and hold and hold and hold. And she's saying, this is exactly what I've, I've had to do. Um, but of course she has to do it at, at a cosmic level. And she's saying such will not last forever, you know, and she's pointing to how she is complemented by Saturn time. So not only does one require a lot of time to gain like a level of understanding, not only in any given field, but also like life perspective. And so along with that, not only having a variety, a variety of experiences, you know, getting into this whole idea of like a 360 degree view and a lot of perspectives. So this would be more like the 12 signs of the zodiac, which uh, rule chokmah or complement chokmah, wisdom. On this side of the tree of life, Bina, Saturn, you know, there's certain lessons that are only gotten from being hard won through hard won experience. And she's saying, but nonetheless, that, that experience does not last forever and it will shift. Um, and so the gifts of, of Saturn will be upon you. And the foremost of these is understanding. And she is saying, I am also going to reflect to you the understanding that I have for you. 
and I am, I am going to embrace you. So it's very validating and it's feeling wondrous and it's making me very emotional right now. And I'm getting the sense that, um, and by the way, when she put me in proportion to her, she's actually much shorter and she's probably, you know, just under five feet um, tall relative to me. I'm tallish <laughs> for a guy. So, and at any rate, this is all, it's all very moving. And so I'm just double checking, seeing the realm, seeing if there's anything else. She's showing me the letter Drukes, which is N in Enochian. So the sense I'm getting is, is that if there's any of the letters that one wishes to do a path working for that is closest to Bina, to the daughter of Fortitude, that is, that's her. So N is it. Her, 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 the word in Enochian is Om or Omp, so for to understand or understanding. Uh, but she's saying that the pathway to that is via direct um, contemplation of, of the letter Drukes or N. And I'm seeing a little bit of that, you know, continuing where she's pointing out that the letter Drukes is basically two crescent moons. So it's sort of that moon Saturn, um, if, if one is doing the banishing ritual of the hexagram, Saturn in that symbolically is at the top and the moon at the bottom. So it's a little bit of that pole there. But regardless, she's saying that, you know, it's important to try to factor in the moon when one is going for various kinds of understanding. So studying of lunar mansions and really appreciating the moon, she's saying, which you came to a little bit late. She's kind of smiling and winking. Um, but this is also, this is, this is another pathway to her. So note to all night charts, right? Of course, this is, you know, the parallel to the goddess Nuit once again of the night. So, so I'm just allowing here and she's saying, let me do one more thing. And she's once again moving up and down my energy body as she did during the noontime session. And she's just saying she, that she will always help me remember. And this has a very, um, once again, a very personal but also emotional meaning to me. So I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Yeah, so just once again, I mean, this is, it's such a beautiful aether. It really is um, going through the whole process to get here is, um, is its own thing, but really appreciating the experience of this aether it cannot be understated. It's, uh, it cannot be overstated. It is beautiful beyond um, description. And the best part is there are eight more aethers after this. So, <laughs> um, it just, it's just a great, it's sort of like when you, you start reaching that final part of, um, Beethoven's ninth, right? When you start really getting into that ode of joy, ode to joy theme. Um, it's like that. So she's showing me once again a sphere, a sphere with a lot of colors on it. It's spinning. It's, she's reminding me that, you know, within this experience right now, there is also Lil. So there's, she's basically saying that this is, it's like every time one goes through the aethers, it's like, there is like a little bit of a leveling up each time. So even though, yes, you're facing the abyss, you're also, and you, you reach zip, it's also like you're kind of getting a higher and higher level of, the, of, a, of an experience of these aethers. So they are definitely worth revisiting. I've yet to 
to scry the aethers and then say, well, that was a drag afterwards. You know, it's like, that wasn't as good as the first time. No, they get better. Um, so, but anyway, she's, the point here is that a lot of these, these energies normally associated with Lil are already here in Zip. And she's saying that that will be an even richer experience of Lil when you, when you get there. And yeah. So I'm looking to see if there's anything else. She's just, just assuring me that, um, the stuff in my mundane life will be gotten through without as much difficulty as I'm worried about. Yeah. And I'm just trying to see if there's anything else. It's like there's a lot she wants to show me, but she also understands that time is short. So I'm really trying to, and there's, you know, just trying to stay focused here. Okay, so there's a bunch of light coming through. And... Okay, so there's a bunch of light coming through. And it's like... Um, how do I describe this? If you've ever seen depictions of the Virgin Mary, this is the feeling of energy that um, she's giving to me right now. So of course, all of the Bina correspondences, Shakti, Virgin Mary, all of these are very valid at the moment. And I'm trying to see, it's just, there's a great deal of magnanimity, just like pouring through. And it's like she's what she's trying to do, it seems like, is trying to really transmit her blessing through this experience right now to all. And of course, I'm very grateful for all of this. And it's like she touches my nose and she says, that's it. So thus ends the vision. <laughs>